In today's show, we use a Power Apps pin input to mark up images. So if you're doing like an inspection app, you want to mark up your truck, or you want to take funny pictures of your friends and put funny faces on them, you can do that with a combination of the image control and the pin input. And today we're going to talk about how that works. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today we're going to talk about the pin input. And what we're going to do is we're going to use it to mark up images that we upload. And the reason for this is a lot of people ask, I think Eric on Twitter was the one that reminded me I needed to do this, but a lot of people want to be able to, you know, take images. That's been one of the big booms of power apps is instead of like info path days where we just made words, people write stuff down. We take a lot of pictures and now that we're getting good at taking pictures in our power apps, people want to be able to mark those up. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can combine the pin input and the image control to do that and then talk about how to you know save that off to SharePoint, get it back into our app as well, and just kind of work through that. We'll also talk about you know how if you truly want to merge the images together to make them one image, because we're going to do everything basically as two and just stack them, how that would work. So we'll at least kind of go through some of those mechanics. All right, that's enough blah, blah, blah. Let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so over here on the desktop, let's just take a look. Let's add a file. And so remember, this is all being done with the easy uploads uh, video. So I'll put a link to that up there above if you haven't seen this video before. But it's the one that explains all the saving mechanics of this. So we'll look at it for a brief second, but we're not going to get into details of how the files are getting saved. But so here you go. We're going to choose Chewy's nose. And then now we're just going to grab our pen input. Just going to draw a little, how about some circles? We'll give him a triangle nose. I'm not very good at triangle noses. And we'll give him some big old ears. There you go. So we've annotated our picture of Chewy. Now keep in mind we're annotating Chewy here. This could be a machine. This could be an accident. This could be a wreck. It could be a broken building. It could be a, a part. You know, some of my people do like food and so they have to do like validate that the food's good. So whatever you need to mark up, we're marking it up. When we hit save here, this is saving it to SharePoint. It's saving two things. It's saving the image they originally attached to so the picture of Chewy's nose and then the pen input as a separate image. So we save both of those to SharePoint. And so if we come over here now, Oh, say hi to uh, Ronald and Brian. Hi, guys. And uh, right, and, and appreciate the mug. Well, yeah, yeah. And so then now if we click over here, we can see that there is our marked up photo. So it's put it back. Now, the key is if we go look at this data over in SharePoint, what we're really doing is we're saving those images off to a document library, and I'm just keeping the link to both images. And so in the Power App, we're just stacking those back together. That's how we're actually showing uh, the marked up image. Now, I'll cut to the chase. If you're like, but Shane, I want to merge it to one image. I don't want two images I have to show on top of each other. I want one. If you look over here in the flow, there is a third party one. I've not used this before, but um, Cloud Mersive has a composite two images together. So I don't know anything about it, but that's the one I've recommended to a few people that have asked to physically merge the files. There might be other ones. That's the one I know of. Okay, so now that we've kind of seen a little bit about how this works and the potential, let's go like mechanically build this thing real quick. So we'll go back over here. You know me, let's just make a new screen, blank. And so the first thing you need is an image control. So we're just gonna throw media, image, and then we'll just manually upload a file this way for the moment. Add an image file. Let's go down here and I don't know what photo I want. <laughs> Use a picture of Chuck. That'd be rude. How about Chewy running? So there you go. So there's a nice big picture of Chewy running. And so if we wanted to mark up this image, now what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to input and then the pin input. And so with the pin input, the key is going to be is that you're just going to stretch it to fit over, but it's not exact same size. It's actually slightly bigger. And that's going to be important to understand in a minute. But so now that we've made that the image would fit inside of the space, but not the whole control, because we have this black bar down here at the bottom. So now it's just as simple as, yeah, I want to use this pretty purple color. Yay. And then be like, run. And then, you know, draw. I mean, I realize you don't really want to see me draw, but I enjoy drawing. A little yellow eyes for Chewy. Give him some scary teeth. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Who knows? Okay, I'll stop. I apologize. I, I really enjoy drawing. But so that's the first key, right? Is that you really just have these two controls stacked on top of each other. And so that's how we're getting this experience. Now, you do need to be careful because, you know, when you start adding image files, remember over here, I was letting people upload any file. And so if I click on the image control, 
you're gonna see that it is the exact size of that box. Nope, not that one, so image. But the pin input is bigger because it has that black bar at the bottom, okay? So just don't be confused, don't upload one image specifically. Like here I just made the mistake of attaching this exactly to Chewy's image, but if you look, I actually did it correctly because the images overlap each other. No, they don't, see? Image five goes all the way to the bottom. So I would need to grab the pin input and make sure that it is slightly bigger than the, uh, the image, right? So the image should fit inside where the black bar is not touching, okay? So that was a common mistake I was making earlier. I, I just made it on video. And so see, because now you can see when I get everything lined up, my markups actually didn't work, right? They, I, I got them off, off canter there. So, so we'll clear them off and then we'll just draw again. Wee, wee. Okay, so that's the first thing, is getting things in the exact spot are very important to get this to line up. Now, if we go back over here and look, when I, what I'm doing over here, so on the add file, all I'm really doing is saying, hey, whatever file they attach with the attachment control, remember the easy upload video, I'll show you that. I'm just throwing the um, image into this variable and then var image name um, into here. So that's why I'm just storing what's in the attachment control and resetting it. So that's letting them upload the picture. If you then look at the image control over here, it is using var image as the image. So that's why when we attach a picture of Adeline, oh, and so that one rotated funny, so you'd have to, you know, you gotta think through that. And so what that is, just bonus learn, I wasn't planning on showing you this, but I'm gonna show you now, is that if you look over here on the right, under advanced, there is something over here called, um, apply EXIF orientation. And so you typically want to, I think, set this to false. So, because that, what that's doing is saying, hey, that image wants to be rotated so it fits properly, and we don't want that. I need it to be up and down, right? Because Adeline is not laying on her side. She's up and down. So if you're having problems with attaching images and they're rotating funny, it's because your camera is setting uh, odd settings, and typically turning off this will fix it. Okay, so now we've got Adeline up. And we've got the image here, right? So remember, image is var image. The pin input, there's nothing special about it whatsoever. So then we have the button for saving. And so this variable shows the pop-up. This one made the pop-up go away. So now what we're doing is we're using that same concept from Easy Upload. We're saying, all right, grab the image that they just uploaded, grab its JSON, uh, cut it down, and then use a flow called Easy Upload to push it out there. And because it'll overwrite names, I'm giving, using now as part of the file name. So I'm putting appending now to the front of it, or prepending, uh, prepending probably, uh, now into the file name. And so then down here, right, so this one finishes the, so these three right here, those three commands do the image they upload, so the picture of Adeline. These next three, what they do is they do the same steps, but for the pin input. So we haven't talked about that before, but you can take the pin input and use the JSON function with that to get the base 64 of the image, which is what we needed. And so then once you've got that, where we upload it, and notice when we upload the files, I'm grabbing the file links back, so var file link and var file link one. So then now I've got the URLs of the two files we just uploaded into the document libraries. So then we patch that marked uh, uh, image, marked up images, ugh, easy for me to say. We patch that, we set the title to the user, kind of like messing with like, what is this? But you probably would have a more specific title than the user's name. Master link is the first one. Markup link is the second one. Boom. We then set everything back to blank. So we reset all of our variables. We reset the pin input and then we hide the pop-up. And so then that's what lets us take a picture of Adeline. Let's do high. And when we save it, so that's the steps of what's happening, right? There's the pop-up going, all of that. And then once it's done, we go over here to my gallery. So the gallery itself is just a simple items uh, marked up images. That's the name of my SharePoint list. So it's just showing all the items. And since I've done all the uploading, my name's there. Like I said, I should have a better title. I don't. And so then on the right, the first thing we have is the image. So this is the actual one if we just pull it away, right? It's the image of Adeline. Let's put that back where it was. Um, so we have the image of Adeline. And so that is gallery one selected dot master link. And then image three one 
this is the uh, image gallery selected markup. Oh, I got these in the wrong place. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I stack these two on top of each other. Here's another important problem that I was running into is you have to make these the same exact size or the same exact ratio as over here. So remember if we looked at um, the image control here, its height is 270, but the pin input's height is 330. They have the same width, 441. So when I went over here, you've got to get that exactly the same. So the image, 441, 270, and then the pin input, 441, 330. So this was another problem that kept biting me in the backside because I kept uh, doing this and not getting my proportions right. So then things looked funny. So if we go back, let's add another picture again real quick. Show you my biggest problem. Grab another picture. Uh, Chewy, what do you want? Okay, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to grab my pen. Oh, give me my pen, thank you. And I'm going to basically kind of, I, and this was how I troubleshot the problem earlier, is I put kind of little red corners roughly on the edges of my frame of my picture so I could figure out like where is the edge of the picture. It didn't have to be exact, but it gave me the right idea of where I was, okay? So then I save this. And this is how you validate that you're getting your, your things correct. So then now if we go back over here and we click on that one, see how they are in the right place, right? Pretty darn close. So the first time I did this, what happened was I had this image 3.1, which is one showing the markup. I had it the same height. And so if I do that, then my images were off. So if you're having problems that your stuff is wrong, it's because your proportions are not correct on the sizes of these two. But once I got this one, I realized that it needed to be the same height as it was over on the other side. What did I say, 330? I think I said 330. So then everything lines up perfectly. And then I believe it wouldn't be a problem if I wanted to now grab, and you know, if I wanted to kind of grow, I'd have to, fiddle around and get these exactly right again, but now I could do and show this stuff is bigger So because the proportions are the same. So as you work through it, think a little bit about that. You know, use my little uh, reds in the trick corners if you're trying to really, you know, deal with alignment issues. But that's it. That is how we save all this stuff. So nothing too complicated here. Um, you know, like I said, there's no magical merge that's built in. So if you're going to merge, you got to go to that third party tool or find something that I don't know about. Um, but this is going to help you guys, hopefully, in those inspection apps where you want to take pictures of cars or machines or whatever, and then, you know, be able to draw on there and capture and show it back. So I think I've also played with this, um, you know, because you might end up having to like produce this to PDF and get those to overlay. So that's going to be a little bit trickier, but that's maybe for another day. So. Anyway, uh, remember if you want, you can download this app. You just go out to training.powerapps911.com and choose a curated library. Uh, so all the subscribers out there get to download this app. I've also got another version of this app that I did uh, for another project, so I'll put that out there. It's just a little fun, playful one, but once again, this kind of gets the, the wheels turning. So yeah, and with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.